when you know you should leave, you want to leave, you are trying to consider leaving a toxic relationship or a narcissistic person, and you are struggling with waiting for the the next worst thing to happen. And you're like, okay, the next thing that happens, I'm out of here. So I'm Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand and recover from, heal from toxic relationships and to transform your life after you've been with narcissistic people or been in toxic relationships. Like, what is the breaking point? What is the thing for you right now that is keeping you in the relationship with a toxic person? And what is the thing you think you're waiting for to make the move to leave? For some people, it's financial. They are, feel financially stuck or financially, they are financially stuck or they're being financially you know, abused by a toxic person. And for some people, that's all it is. For some people, it's hope. It's waiting for them to just make a change because they see little changes in this toxic person every now and then, and they gives them an ounce of hope. For other people, it's their self-esteem. They feel so lost to who they are. And I have to say, that's the easiest one to work on if you find help and someone to work with you on helping you recreate your self-esteem. I know it sounds funny, but it really is one of the more, um, it's because it's about you, you're able to actually do something about it because you're the only one who's going to make change in this relationship if you're with a toxic person and the change toward a better feelings of self that then helps you leave a situation what could be better than that what else what are other reasons what's keeping you there the question is to ask yourself so that you understand not to beat yourself up not to judge yourself please don't go there because that's not what this is about you start judging yourself in these situations oh i'm so stupid i know i should leave oh whatever judging yourself it's just creating more of the same problem okay so let's stop that and let's move toward what is it that you can do to get through this so trauma bonding that's a reason right there's a reason to stay because you're so full of cognitive dissonance, you can't see through, right? And you can't see your way out. Fear, fear is locks people in place. A lot of times people get in, okay, when you have fear and when you've been traumatized and when you've been in toxic relationships, what happens? You start living in your amygdala. Fight, flight is your way, baby. That's the life you live right now, right? Like you're always in it. And when you're in fight, flight, where's logic? Woohoo, way back in the back. It's not, it's not functioning. Where's your, where's your sense of what you want for your life? Where's your ambition? Where's your agency and your will? It's gone because you're so trapped in the trauma bond. Getting through the trauma bond, and I've made a series of videos, or I will be, about helping you heal from trauma bonding. So please hit subscribe and the thumbs up. So when you are in these relationships and you're like, how do I get out? Okay, so here's, those are some reasons. Your reason's gonna be your own, right? You're your own person. And then what? What do you do? Because the thing is, we're always waiting for the next worst thing to happen. We're always giving chances. We are loyal people and we're trauma bonded and we are thinking it's our fault. What are you going to do to to make the decision to step away from these relationships? Well, that's why people come in here, right? They come in here and they talk about, you know, working their way through it. And that's one thing. So please come back and talk later. It's important to start looking at what you want for your life. It's important to start seeing yourself separate from that toxic person, okay? There's an enmeshment that happens when you're with narcissistic people or toxic people in your life that makes your mind constantly trying to micromanage the situation or manage the situation so that you're not being hurt by them, so that you're not... Um, you're, you're trying to stay one step ahead of them all the time to keep everything smooth sailing, right? And to keep things as calm as they can to mitigate any narcissistic reactions that that person might have. And you are trying to control it that way instead of allowing yourself to have choice, freedom, right? Within it. And, and there are situations you can't get out of. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about when people can't seem to make themselves leave even if they want to. I'm not talking about situations right now, right in this talk about situations where someone like legitimately can't get out of it or the the narcissism is coming from the outside or it's coming from, you know, a, like a workplace or an institution or something like that that you're stuck inside the system of. I'm talking more about the interpersonal kind where you can't 
get out even though the door is wide open and you have absolute choice to do so. First of all, see it for what it is. It is someone trying to suck you back in so that they can take what they need from you. They don't think about the relationship and how it was. Were they a person who was interacting with you in a loving way that allowed you space to be yourself, they could be themselves, and you interacted together in support back and forth with the other person? My guess is everyone's going, not even a little right now, okay? That is what the relationship will always be with them. Remember, they need to control the way the world sees them, the way the world uh, the way you function in relationship with them, they they are living in a delusion that they are the only thing that matters and that they that their way is what should be imposed on everyone around them. And so they create a world around them that fits their needs. And then they suck the supply out of you in the, mean, in the meantime. So know that that's what's going to happen for each person. There's going to be an individual pull that makes you some people feel empathy and they feel guilty. Okay, let me tell you right now, if you're feeling guilty, that doesn't come from empathy. Empathy and guilt are two separate things. We think we feel guilty because we feel empathy because we feel bad the person hurts, but that is not what is happening. The empathy allows you to see that they are a human being with their own experience in life and, and have the guilt is coming because you've been indoctrinating it into believing that it's your responsibility for everyone else's happiness. And that is simply not true. Okay, that is way too big a burden for any human being to take on for anyone. Would you want somebody, your neighbor to be responsible for your happiness? No. You think something like perhaps I couldn't make it work. And if I go back one more time, maybe I can because I've learned all this stuff about myself and I've learned about narcissism. And so maybe now and make it work. Right. Is that right? I can I can just squeeze all the life out of myself. Right. And put myself in the box they need me in and I can just make it work. The narcissist often fills your head with thoughts like there is no one that's going to love you the way I love you. No one will ever accept you the way I accept you. No one will ever treat you the way I treat you, in which from a distance, you're like, yeah, no one ever will. That's right. <laughs> right. But in the moment, they're feeding you with the glamorous good side of them, the shiny parts, right? That is all a lie anyway, because it's all manipulation to keep you there. And then they are making you believe something's wrong with you and that you're never going to have anything normal or healthy outside of them. It's, it, it's not one thing. That's the other thing. Sometimes this is just not one thing. It's a lot of things. It can be that it's always been this way. My whole life's been this way. What do you mean get out of it? Get out of my life? What are you talking about? This is how life is. This is how people treat me. Why would it be different? And even when people are saying, you deserve so much more. You're such a good person. You're so beautiful. You're so good. You're so wonderful. And you're like, and that's been proven to me how because like, everything in life's always been this way and that can be super confusing because that means you have to see life in a whole new way and and learn that what you've learned about life it's all been wrong <laughs> right and so which is actually an amazing thing because that means you have an opportunity to have a better life but it's also a really conflicting thing for the way your mind is functioning now narcissists mind brainwash you right into believing things they gaslight you they manipulate you they manipulate you to do what they want period and they use the tactic that works you find out who you are in this every time you're critical of yourself every time you are judging yourself every time you are thinking it's all my fault. Every time you're like, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't handsome enough. If you, you know, whatever it is for you, stop. Say, there's an interesting thought. Would I really think that about myself? <laughs> you, you see this as logic and you start focusing on your life and your path. What do you want for yourself, right? What do you want? What, what, how do you see yourself? What kind of relationship do you want with yourself? How do you want to embody this body that you're living in and function in this life that you have? And how do you relate to the world through that instead of through the psychology and the trauma that's been placed in you? You have no idea. And that is a beautiful place. So the very question you can ask yourself every day is what would it be like to be me right now? Hmm. Not in a sad, scary way, like in a super curious way. What would it be like to be me right now? I wonder, 
right? Like in staying in that wonder and staying in that forward movement of your own life that keeps you open from your core, from your heart, from your intuition of what you know is right for you. And you don't know what it is right now because you're locked up here in the trauma neural pathway. Okay. And that's okay. It's where you are. And so in order to change that, we start creating a new neural pathway. And the very question, take a breath, exhale on the exhale, feel your, your heart being there for yourself. Like you would a friend exhale and think, I wonder what it'd be we like to be me right now. I wonder what I'm thinking because just that question, don't answer it. Just stay in the question. You start now. You don't wait for trauma bonding to heal. You, you just jump in. Um, it is almost always about finding self. Almost always. Always about creating a life for yourself that is different from what you thought it was. It is almost always about learning to function from self-compassion rather than the trauma. The more you start understanding who you are and the more you start really understanding who they are, who they are, how they function. And when I say they, I'm talking about people who don't have empathy. I'm talking about people who will continually have toxic relationships their entire life, okay? Because they function from that toxic place. They don't wish to do what I'm suggesting to you, which is self-awareness, self-discovery, self-compassion, and then expanding that compassion into the world. They don't wish to do that, okay? And they don't wish to do that because they lack the empathy in their brains to have that peace that extends it into the world. The more you become you and the more you see them as who they are, the wider it gets. And the, the wider it gets, the less there's a pull toward them. There might be interest and fascination and curiosity, but there's not a pull toward the emotional, like, please give me what you've never given me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a, a relationship with a narcissist is based on a depletion. It's based on an absence that is always needing filling. And they give you drops. And every time they give you drops, wow, you feel amazing for two seconds. And then, and you're also anxious at the same time, right? And so that isn't a way to function. And that is certainly not your birthright. Your birthright is to be your own person, to experience this life at, from a sense of self. And a narcissist doesn't let you have a sense of self because they need you to be what they tell you to be and to be a puppet and to be their to be their perfect supply, even though there's no such thing. And, and that's that. If you guys need coaching or group coaching, please check it out. Something it's a, it's a motion toward, you know, something in your life that could give you guidance and focus for healing from this. So check it out in the description of each video, please. If you need that, um, I'm available. The group coaching is fantastic group of people.